Does Indiana have a team full of snipers this year? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? It is Friday, November 11th. This is Locked On Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU athletics. I'm your host as always, Jacob Rude. Want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Want to thank Underdog for the being the sponsor of today's episode. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code locked on and get your first deposit up to $100 doubled. IU comes away with as big of a victory uh, margin-wise as I can remember in some time on Thursday night against Bethune Cookman. Final score 101 to 49. A a fun win, a dominant win. Uh the type of game that you kind of almost ideally hoped Indiana would have before that matchup against Xavier next week. We talked about the Hoosiers getting on the right note, heading into that game strong. And I don't know that I could have drawn up a better uh win and a better way to win with a number of the things they did that we're gonna talk about. Uh, in today's episode, you we have to talk first about that three-point shooting because my oh my, uh, the Hoosiers uh, go 10 of 24 and number of guys, again, it was by committee for the most part, which seems to be how I use going to do this thing this season. It's obviously only two games in. That being said, Miller Cop had almost half of I use threes, four of six, absolutely caught fire. Uh, during this game was a part of big runs in both halves, uh, especially to open the second half. Um, there are, there are a number of things that I think have changed to help him this season. For one, I think there's more confidence there. It feels like there's more confidence there. One of the three pointers he had in that second half, he was running up court before it was even going through the net. You don't do that if you're not a confident shooter, the other thing is I think um, having both Jalen and Xavier on the court as guys that can drive into the lane and collapse to the defense has led to him getting more wide open looks. Uh, just having Jalen there as another threat uh, draws defense's attentions because a lot of the looks he's getting are wide open and a number of them have been corner three pointers and there is no shot easier more that three point shooters want more than a corner three pointer. So Huge night from him. Trey Galloway looks like apparently he's going to be a legitimate three-point shooter. Again, I we're doing all these takeaways after two exhibition games and two regular season games. At no point has Trey Galloway hesitated to shoot three-pointers, and he made two of four again on Thursday night. If he's going to shoot like that, it's going to be really, really hard to keep him off the floor because that was, as we talked about all summer, the big thing that was missing from his game was the ability to knock down outside shots. He was still doing everything else, three rebounds, uh, an assist, a steal, plus 31, uh, team best plus 31 in 19 minutes. So, look, we saw his impact last season. If you add three-point shooting on top of that, boy, it it could be a big season for him. Tamar Bates knocked down a three-pointer. Jordan Geronimo walked into a three-pointer. Uh, that was not a spot-up three-pointer. He caught that uh, as a trailer and just hoisted and buried it. Malik Renou, uh hit a three-pointer. He apparently has that in his bag as well. Xavier Johnson hit one. Like we've said before, there's not going to be one guy, maybe Miller Cop aside, that's going to just light on light it on fire this year. It's going to be... One from this guy, two from this guy, one from this guy. We saw Bethune Cookman early on in this game daring Indiana to shoot, and they didn't start the game shooting particularly well, at least on their first handful of attempts. Um, that changed very quickly. So uh, they, it, it was a very welcome sight. IU missed its first three three pointers and its last one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so it's first three and it's last six. Uh, so they had a stretch of hitting 10 of their 15 three pointers. You do that against any team 
it's going to be hard for that team to withstand that. And especially obviously Bethune Cookman among those. So, um, a strong showing in that regard uh, shooting the ball. This isn't going to, uh, alleviate any of the concerns. It's going to take a much larger sample size to do so. I still have some questions, is Trey Galloway a, a legitimate shooter? Is this just a hot, hot start? Same for Jordan Geronimo. Um, Race Thompson hit some in the exhibition games. Um, how much have these guys improved? How much is this uh, just kind of a hot spell over a couple of games? There's no way of us knowing that without having a larger sample size. The signs are there, though. They're encouraging. Defense is what I want to talk about next with this team uh, that suffocating just it, it, they play and Robbie Hummel did a great job of pointing this out. I really hate how good of a, an analyst Robbie Hummel, Robbie Hummel is because he's a Purdue guy and one that I think a lot of IU fans did not like, but he did a good job of pointing out last season. IU was good defensively, but it was in a way where, uh, trace was this rim protector and they were funneling things to the middle and it wasn't necessarily this high intensity pick you up uh, and stay in, in your grill basically type of defense. No, no, that's what it was on Thursday night. IU was picking up, Bethune Cookman was having to start its uh, possessions near midcourt, which just completely like unravels an offense if you're forced that far out. And they never really got into a flow uh, before garbage time and really not even up to that or not even during that as well. IU forced 19 turnovers, scored 29 points off of those turnovers, 33 fast break points to three for Bethune Cookman. Um, this IU team we've seen wants to get out and run a little bit. And so the best way to do that is to force stops, force turnovers, uh, Bethune Cookman shot 20 of 51, 39%. They were three of 15 from three. Um, you get those stops, you get those turnovers, uh, you get those live ball turnovers and you're able to get out and go. And that that's what this IU team wants to do to a certain degree with X Jalen hood. Shafina, we'll talk about him. He is great in transition. Trace is as good of a rim running big man as Indiana's had since Cody Zeller. Uh, so you have these guys that are ready to get out and go getting those stops is the best way of doing it. We've seen that through the first two games. We certainly saw it on Thursday. It, it was everything you could have, like I said, everything you could have wanted IU to do in this one, they did. Uh, this was the type of performance you wanted. Maybe one that I don't know that needed, but confidence wise, this, this, is really good for Indiana to win like this, to knock down three pointers in doing so to answer some questions, to just go out and just beat the heck out of an opponent. That is, is really good. We'll see. They're going to have a test to see if this is just them playing sub par teams, basically teams that they're just much better than, but I have a really good feeling about this team. I'll hold it until maybe they beat Xavier or down the road, I don't want to come flying off the handle yet, but this team really feels like this could be a really special season. Uh, let's talk some individuals, Trace, Xavier, we mentioned Jalen Hood, Shafina. There's a number of guys I want to touch on and talk about their performances on Thursday. Before we do that, though, let's talk about today's sponsor, Underdog. Uh, it's they. Uh, this episode's brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up college football season. The IU game is not on underdog yet. I don't know that it will be on underdog. Look, underdog's a very simple concept. There are other games uh, you can go to if you're a Big Ten fan, uh, if you're just a general college football fan, um, or if you're a Washington football fan with Michael Penix. This is an example for you. Washington at Oregon on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Michael Penix, 315.5 passing yards. You can pick higher or lower on that. You do that up to five different players or picks uh, across at least two games. Uh, and the more picks you do, the more picks you get right, the more money you win. Uh, it is a, a fun way to add some spice, like they said, 
to college football Saturday. So sign up with the promo code locked on all one word and underdog will double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. So if you put in a hundred dollars, they will give you a hundred dollars. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the underdog fantasy app in the app store or Google play store. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on get in on the college football pick em action today. Thanks again to everyone for making locked on Hoosiers your first listen or your first watch today for your second listen, check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available uh, on this app, YouTube, wherever you guys get podcasts at in case you missed it on Thursday, we released a bonus episode previewing, uh, the, um, Ohio state IU football game. That is, we're not going to talk about that today. It's it. I use a 41 point underdog. So I think that says plenty about, uh, how this game is going to go. If you want to listen to that, it's a bonus episode on our feed or on the YouTube channel. Let's get back to basketball. Something that, uh, is much more fun to talk about. Trace Jackson Davis. I mentioned it in our preview that we, um, I I wanted a a strong performance from him. 21 points on nine of 10 shooting three of three from the free throw line. Yeah. I mean, that's, that'll that'll do. That's pretty strong. That's good enough. (laughs) Six rebounds, all of them offensive, an odd little quirk there. Um, I, you finished with 29 or 41 rebounds to 19 for Bethune Cookman. So it wasn't like they struggled with rebounding. It was just oddly trace Jackson Davis only grabbed offensive rebounds, a couple of assists. He only played 21 minutes and was a plus 17. That's one thing to note. Now these have been two blowouts, but IU has not Jalen hood. Shafino is the only one that's played a, a good amount of minutes and he hasn't gone North of 30 considering what Mike Woodson was asking from trace and Xavier. Um, that is, at the end of last season, I should say where they were playing, 35 to 40 minutes a game, especially in the big 10 and NCAA tournament when they weren't in foul trouble. Uh, This is a a very welcome, very different site. You can do that when you have a tremendous bench that we're going to talk about, but about trace, uh, he looks as confident as, as fluid as ever. Um, He's still flying high. He's still making all the moves. He's still grabbing boards. Nothing has changed with him. I just needed to see it just to be a little certain uh, it is a, a, a welcome sight to see him just dominate the way he did because I use first test is going to come in eight days. They have a whole week of practice to get ready for that Xavier game. Not that I was ever going to be concerned that trace wasn't going to show up. He proved last season, at the end of the year, he's a big game player, but just seeing him dominate, I'm always going to enjoy it. Xavier Johnson, another one that we highlighted a mixed bag a little bit, but overall I thought a pretty good game defensively is where he is really making a name for himself and really making a mark. Um, he's been as good as anybody. And on, uh, Thursday, he, he stayed out of foul trouble. Really? He had three fouls, but only one in the first half, which kept him on the court finish. I mean, seven points doesn't really do justice to his impact. He was one of three from the field. That one shot being a three, four, four at the line, but Grabbed four rebounds, had six assists. A steal was a plus 21 on the night. Um, he's he's finding his groove a lot more, and uh, especially defensively, he's still making an impact, even if he is struggling a little bit offensively. You can't really tell. Uh, Jalen hood Shafino did struggle offensively on Thursday. He went two of eight, uh, still finished with eight points because he was four or five at the line, but man... He does so much good out there and so many good things. Eight assists. I think one of my favorite aspects about him is how good he is in transition. He's not someone that gets sped up or has kind of this um, tunnel vision where he, he has to get to the rim. And a lot of times there were it happened in uh, for one of Miller Cop's threes is that he recognizes – uh, he may not be able to get to the rim, but if he kind of stops and curls around, finds one of his trailers or something like that, the defense is still compromised and they're scrambling and they're trying to find guys. 
And if he knows where his guys are and can find a Miller cop walking into an open three, uh, at some point he's going to dump it off to trace for a huge dunk, things like that. He's going to, he's still taking advantage of those types of situations without it specifically being him getting to the rim and in a fast break. So it's a poise in a, an ability to lead an offense that you don't see out of freshman. Uh, you don't see that out of a lot of veteran point guards. Uh, to see a freshman do it is remarkable. He is he is as impressive of a freshman point guard as any Indian has had since maybe Yogi. And Yogi wasn't even asked. Ne- well, he was asked a lot. He was asked to run a lot of offense. I, I he's up there with Yogi in terms of impactful, impressive freshman guards. Uh, like I said, eight points, eight assists, five rebounds, two steals, played the 28 minutes. Excuse me. He was the team high plus 34. Trey was a plus 31. Good things happen when Jalen hood Shafino is on the court on both sides of the ball. So uh, uh, continues to be impressive. The bench again, this is just going to be a reoccurring trend. I, you had 51 bench points. They had more points off the bench than Bethune Cookman had total points. Uh, there were a number, number of guys, Jordan Geronimo, 11 points. He's apparently going to also average one spectacular missed dunk per game. Uh, he was four or five from the field. Trey Galloway, 10 points. Uh, Caleb Banks came in and uh, he had eight points, six of six from the free throw line. Malik, we mentioned uh, nine points, four rebounds, couple of assists. Um, he had another strong showing knocked down that three pointer as well. Tamar Bates, five points, four assists. I liked what he did. I, I wish he could get a couple more shots to go down because I think he's played decently. The first two games, this game better than the first one. Um, I thought he's shown a little bit more maturity and running an offense and being kind of a lead guard, making the right play. He still will take some interesting shots, but I, I think you kind of live with those. Uh, I th- I've liked how he's played largely speaking, and he was a plus 30 in 23 minutes as well. So uh, the results are there. If I, you, they, there was a discussion during the game about IU going nine deep and whether, whether they can do that deeper into the season. It's not something that typically happens. Um, things could change, but it's hard for me to look at any one of those four guys and imagine them not being in the rotation. Malik is going to be the first guy off the bench more often than not. Same with Trey Galloway, especially if he's shooting, he's going to see a lot of minutes. Jordan Geronimo, he's going to be in there for a lot of minutes. Maybe Tamar Bates is the guy that you would theoretically. T- I I don't even see that because um, Xavier Johnson's going to be in foul trouble at times, and Tamar's going to be the guy that will come in for that. Um, I really don't see how any of those four guys don't continue to see worthwhile minutes things could change maybe somebody's off to a hot start and struggles we'll see but right now this seems like a really strong nine guys that i was able to put out there against just about anybody i i love these nine guys um the starters plus malik trey jordan tamar that's a really strong group that's depth that iu hasn't had um I, that bench group is a lot of fun out there together as well. It, it's going to be a lot of fun this season to see that bench group together. I use going to win a lot of games. I think this season off of its depth, because when you go to the bench in various, maybe big 10 games or something, there's a, a drop off that isn't going to be there with Indiana. When you have Jalen Tamar, Trey Geronimo Malik out there, um, that isn't that much of a drop off if at all, in some spots from their starters. So this depth is going to win IU a lot of games that I'm certain of, even if it's two games, four games total with the exhibition games in that depth is going to be a huge weapon for Indiana this season. And this isn't going to be the last time we talk about them. That is the last time we talk about the men's team though. Today's episode, let's preview the women's team who have their second game of the season tonight against UMass Lowell. 
We'll give you everything you need to know about that one here in a minute. First, if you've thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, I love to procrastinate. You guys want to listen up right now. Uh, this moment, right now, Locked On Hoosiers listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it because Simply Safe was named the best home security system by U.S. News and World in 2022, a third year in a row they have won that award. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Do not miss out your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. You can get half off right now at simplysafe.com slash locked on college it is their biggest discount of the year do not wait simplysafe.com slash locked on college there is no safe like simply safe let's talk this women's basketball team who wrap up an exciting week of basketball for uh iu both men and women IU will take on UMass Lowell on Friday, 7 p.m. in Assembly Hall on Big Ten Network Plus. Indiana leads the series 1-0. Their only matchup came back in 2016 uh, with the Hoosiers coming away with a 74-45 victory. Um, This is going to be another tune-up, very similar to the men's team. This is their last tune-up before a big game. Now, the men's team is playing a borderline top 25 team on the road, which is tough. IU is going to be favored in that game. Uh, it's a mild a mild test, we could say, for this one. The women's team is going to Tennessee on Monday. So this is not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of warm-up time before the Hoosiers face Tennessee... Tennessee is not a borderline top 25 team. They are firmly ranked uh, in that um, in that top 25. I believe they're right above Indiana. I'm trying to pull up the rankings as we speak, uh, but they are fifth. They're not right above Indiana. They are fifth. So um, they are one and one. We'll preview that game down the line. They lost to Ohio State. But Friday is going to serve as I use last chance to um, – pick up a victory and get right similar. A lot of the same talking points that we had with um, the men's team going into this game on Thursday was or do apply to the women's team uh, tonight. A couple things to watch out for. Is this three point shooting real? Uh, They shot the ball well in their, in their first game. There are a lot of similarities between the men's and women's team. Uh, um, a lot of them. And so they're anchored by all American post players. Uh, they have a a really good returning guard to varying levels. Grace Berger, also an all American, um, Xavier Johnson, really good. And they're, they're adding pieces around it to, uh, try to strengthen Indiana women's team also need to prove that they can shoot the three pointer, but they were 12 of 25 in their opener. They have something to build on. The question is, was that real? Was that a one-off game? Uh, I mean, five of those 12 came from Yarden Garzon, who is another kind of, I don't want to say question mark, but how good is she? I don't expect her to average 19 points on uh, over 50% shooting from the field this season, but is she going to be a legitimate weapon game in and game out for the Hoosiers? Because if so that ceiling is raised even more. So what impact is she going to make in this contest? Is she going to continue to be a consistent three point shooter? Who's going to be the consistent shooters for Indiana? Those are all questions that I'll be looking um, for them to answer. And just similar to what we we've discussed with the men's team, keep that momentum up, build that momentum heading into that Tennessee game drop 101 points. Uh, I mean, they scored 86 in the first game. Um, Really blow a team out, get everybody jumping around, dancing, having a good time. 
uh, because you're going to have a really tough test on Monday against uh, Tennessee. So this is your warm up, your last chance to really um, test yourselves and build that chemistry before that contest. Don't overlook UMass Lowell, though. Uh, you don't want to head into that one, into that Tennessee game, coming off an embarrassing loss. So I'm excited to watch this women's team see if they can cap off a perfect week of basketball for Indiana. Like I said, that one will be on BTN Plus on Saturday. Uh, the, the football game is a big noon kickoff on Fox if you guys are going to tune into that. Godspeed for all of those that will. Uh, it, as I said, IU is a 41-point underdog. I don't know that that one's going to go well. You can get that full preview from me and Locked On uh, Buckeyes host Jay Stevens in our crossover episode, the bonus episode we did that is up on YouTube on our podcast feed. But thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with you on Monday. Recap the football game. Recap the women's basketball game. Preview that Tennessee game. All of that fun stuff. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter if you have not already. Subscribe to the podcast. All of that amazing stuff. Uh, Most importantly, though, guys, have a great weekend. Go Hoosiers, and as always, LEO.